classroom of the elite second year volume 11 has finally been translated and after a while i have finally read the entirety of this volume and this was pretty much a calm before the storm basically it was a setup volume for things that are going to happen in the upcoming exam and most likely towards the end of second year and it's very interesting considering the fact that there's a lot of things that happen in this volume that while they do look very calm, it's also very clear that there's a lot of hints that a lot of big things are going to happen, not just with Ayana Koji, but with the other characters as well. And of course, like always, this video is going to contain spoilers. So if you are somebody who hasn't finished reading this volume or you're not up to date with the Classroom of the Elite series, then you have been warned because this video is going to contain a lot of spoilers. So now that that's out of the way, let's just begin. So we start off with, of course, a soliloquy from a character and this character is Yamamura who is somebody that has been introduced in second year and has had a lot of moments in these recent volumes. We come to find out that Yamamura's biggest flaw in her is the fact that she doesn't really seem to have many friends and she has a hard time being able to communicate with other people. It's so bad in fact that pretty much everyone sees her as basically an invincible person because that's how non-existent she pretty much has been for her entire life. But of course, things have changed ever since she's not only entered the advanced nurturing high school, but also also ever since she has been part of class A, this being Sakinagi's class. After this soliloquy, we jump right back with Ayana Koji in which he explains how despite word spraying around that Kamura was the one to be expelled from class A, a lot of people were first in shock but due to Kamura not having that many deep relationships with people and not having that many close friends, sooner people forgot about this or just simply moved on, showing how everyone has gotten used to this kind of environment. Ayana Koji in these moments is actually heading towards the school because he has a meeting with Chabashira. This of course is in relation to the conference meeting that has been always been talked about in the most recent volumes in which he's supposed to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with Chabashira about how his life in the school has been. And in fact, he's actually the last person that Chabashira has to talk to in order to conclude this kind of conference. Of course, Ayana Koji heads to the location that he's supposed to meet Chabashira and knocks on the door. After he's given permission to go in, in this scene, two important things happen. Chabashira is actually talking to Ayana Koji about whether or not he sees any improvements or things that the school needs to do to have a better school lifestyle. And if he has any troubles with his classmates, friends, or other people that he's met in this school. Ayana Koji answers this very confident and has no hesitation explaining how there's no problems in the school and that so far everything has been okay. This of course leads to Chabashira having a bittersweet smile because it seems that Ayana Koji is 100% being serious but at the same time not giving specific details. Even Chabashira tells Ayana Koji that usually when people say these kind of comments they actually go into further detail about what they mean. But Ayana Koji just simply responds saying that he really has nothing left to say. Realizing that nothing new is going to be added, Chabashira continues and informs Ayana Koji about the whole parent-teacher conference that they're going to have during the spring. Ayana Koji at first doesn't seem to be interested because he believes that his father isn't going to show up and it's just simply going to be another case in which somebody else is going to show up to replace his father. But his demeanor quickly changes when Chabashira tells him that his father is actually coming. Chabashira explains to Ayana Koji that at first his father really had no plans into coming into the school but it seems that a while later he actually contacted the school telling him that he is in fact coming. Of course, for Ayana Koji, this is a huge surprise because not only is this out of character for his father to do, but now he's wondering what is he trying to do in this situation? What is his actual plan? And it's very clear for Ayana Koji that this has now become one of his priorities because who knows what his father's intentions is into coming back into the school. After his meeting with Chabashira ended, it has now become dark and Ayana Koji is heading back to his room. But this is where he notices that somebody is waiting for him and it's none other than Hashimoto. It seems that like he's been there for quite a while because once he sees Ayana Koji, he tells him that he actually took a while to come to his room. Ayana Koji asks him what he wants, but of course, he quickly realizes that this conversation with Hashimoto is going to be very serious, so they need some privacy. But when 
when he's about to open the door to his room to let Hashimoto in, he knows that there's somebody in the staircase that is watching them. Of course, he has no idea who they are, but he also wonders if Hashimoto knows that they are being watched. But just in case he doesn't know, he doesn't tell Hashimoto about anything that he just noticed. Once he enters the room, Hashimoto sits down to tell Ayana Koji if he has heard about the rumors of him possibly being the traitor of Class A. Ayana Koji confirms that he has heard a few things about him, but he's not sure if that's the case. At first, Hashimoto tries to play the victim card and says that he isn't the traitor and he has no idea why people think he's a traitor. Ayana Koji is very quick to tell him that if he's just simply going to waste his time, then this conversation is going to end quick because he knows that he is the traitor. Hashimoto is done playing the victim and tells Ayana Koji about what has happened to him ever since he was seen as the traitor. Not only are many of his classmates suspicious of him, but it's very clear that he has made so many enemies and this one is specifically involving Sakyanagi. Ayana Koji is not surprised that Hashimoto has become Sakyanagi's enemy because let's be honest, anybody who tries to mess with Sakyanagi is obviously not going to last long in the school. And Hashimoto knows this because he makes it very clear that he too is worried about what's going to happen to him in the near future. And the reason why he wanted to talk to Ayana Koji in the first place is because he wanted to express to someone what he's actually feeling at this moment. Of course, Ayana Koji does understand why he's being nervous, but tells Hashimoto that if he wanted to do this in the first place, then he should have known what was going to happen. In which Hashimoto responds saying that he did knew the consequences to his action, but he also does have a plan to try to take down Sake Nagi. Of course, Ayana Koji is skeptical if he really does have a fully well-prepared plan in order to take down Sake Nagi because he's still wondering why Hashimoto even decided to betray Sake Nagi in the first place. He does know a few reasons in this conversation like Hashimoto telling him that he wanted him to be in class A but Sakinagi had no intention doing that but Ayana Koji could tell there's more to this than meets the eye and he actually asks Hashimoto why did he truly want to betray Sakinagi but this piece of information is something that wouldn't be revealed until the very end because the next scene we are seeing Ayana Koji and Hashimoto leaving Ayana Koji's room in which at first Hashimoto is planning on going back to his room but once Ayana Koji says that he's going to the convenience store to get dinner he asks Ayana Koji if he could tag along, which of course Ayana Koji doesn't refuse. But once they get into the elevator and they reach the lobby floor, they encounter somebody else from class A, and it is none other than I. I says that it must be a coincidence that she managed to meet up with Ayana Koji, but once she looks at who the person is, she also states that it's very unusual for Ayana Koji to be with the traitor of class A. Which of course Hashimoto tries to deny it but it's very clear that Ai is very skeptical and despite her telling Hashimoto that while she may not have concrete evidence that he is the traitor, it's very clear that she does fully believe that he is the traitor. She asks Ayana Koji where he's going and this is where Hashimoto tries to jump into the conversation saying that they're both going to the convenience store but this is where I cut him off saying that she was asking Ayana Koji. It was also during the same discussion that Hashimoto finds out that I was actually keeping an eye on him because she knew very well that Hashimoto and Ayana Koji were talking in his room. When Ayana Koji tells I that they're going to the convenience store, I decides to tag along with them as well and once they reach the convenience store they actually stumble upon somebody else and this is yet again another class A student, this being Yamamura. Ayana Koji is actually surprised to see her because he rarely sees her in this kind of location. But upon seeing Yamamura, Ayana Koji confirms that the person that seemed to be also watching them was Yamamura as well. So it seems that I and Yamamura were both keeping an eye on them. I decides to invite Yamamura with them in their group. But right away, Ayana Koji is able to notice that despite all of them being part of class A, Yamamura is still finds it difficult to even interact with her own classmates. However, this wouldn't be the only person that we would see in the convenience store because a familiar face is also in this location as well. This being the third year student, Kuryuin. Kuryuin actually sees all of them but doesn't question it and once all of them say their names, Kuryuin only responds by saying that she'll remember them very soon. Of course, all of them are confused as to what she meant 
but she doesn't go into details and just simply leaves the convenience store. In the next chapter, we see that Ayana Koji as well as the other second years are ready to board buses and this is because of course this is going to be the main event of this volume, this being the exchange training camp. And of course, this is similar to first years except this time is actually there's no competition. This is not considered a special exam. And one thing that's very interesting that Ayana Koji also points out is how there seems to be less students in this year's training camp compared to last year. And this is because of course he notices very quickly that there seems to be only one bus that is reserved for the third years. And of course if this was like a normal exam there will be more buses meaning that the entirety of the third years would be there as well. But in this moment that is not the case. Not to mention that upon boarding the buses, it seems that there's not really any specific seats that these students have to take, meaning they can sit wherever they want. And of course, Kay decides to instantly sit next to Ayana Koji, which leads to Ayana Koji realizing that they're both gaining a lot of stares. But it doesn't seem to bother Kay as she's very quick to start a conversation with Ayana Koji. Ayana Koji tells Kay wouldn't have been a better idea if she just simply sat with the other girls to which Kay responds saying that she's going to do that when they return to the school. But after that's all been cleared up, she tells Ayana Koji that there's actually a movie that she wants to watch with him. Ayana Koji is very quick to ask Kay when this movie is going to come out. Of course Kay is confused as to why he wants the specific details but she tells him that this movie will be coming out during spring. Of course, Ayana Koji takes it into consideration and after a long while of thinking, he tells Kay that they both will be going to this movie. Kay is still confused and she could tell by his stares that there's something more going on but she just simply ignores it thinking it's no big deal. After some time in the bus, Tabashira enters it and begins to talk with the class saying that this training camp is actually very different from last year's because once again this is not considered a special exam which leads to the class being very calm but Chavashir does state that while this isn't a special exam the purpose of this training camp is for everyone to start to get along with everybody else that's from the other classes and more specifically to get along with the first years it's important to create relationships and have more deeper connections with the people outside of the class and this also includes the third years as well. She goes first saying that everyone is going to be in a specific group and that they all have been assigned to be in that group and in this group they'll be competing with other groups with the activities that the school has set up and whichever group gets first place they'll receive points. Now the catch is that these points can't be transferred and they're pretty much only going to be used for the person who wins them which of course it means that these points if you want to use them for something like negotiations are not going to work because it seems that these points can only be used for purchases and stuff like that. Chabashira starts to hand out the papers in which it includes the names of the groups that the school has already formed. Ayana Koji is very quick to find his name and see which group he belongs to. However, one thing that's very interesting that a few members of the class start to notice is how some of these groups seem to be very strong. Someone points out how Nagamu's group has people like Hirata, Horikita, and Ichika in their groups. And if there's one thing that a lot of people notice with this particular group, is that they're all academically gifted. However, Chabashiro responds by saying that the school tried to balance these groups out the best they could. And even though these groups may be considered unfair, she makes it very clear that the activities that a group is going to compete, they don't know until they are actually about to compete. It's all random, so there's not going to be advantages or there's going to be exploits that the group can easily use. Once they reach the training camp, Ayana Koji is very quick to find his group and his group is actually very interesting as well and consists of people like Hashimoto, Yamamura, Ai, Hiyori, Tsubaki and their leader this being Kuryuen which of course now Ayana Koji is able to understand why Kuryuen said that they were going to remember the people's names and faces is because it seemed that they were all going to be in the same group. But very quickly Kuryuen shows us that she's not really up to being a leader and in fact she doesn't even want to be a leader to begin with as she excuses herself from the group. This leads to Hashimoto of course trying now to be not only the leader 
but to try to hold the group together and that is something that Ayana Koji sees that Hashimoto seems to be really good at. Hashimoto tries to gather all the members of the group and tries to see which people are good of which certain things. However, he very quickly finds out that there are a few people, if not half of the people, that seem to have troubles with certain activities that are going to be happening in the training camp. And while he is skeptical about what's going to happen with other groups, they all agree that it's only a matter of time until they find out what's actually going to happen. After lunch, Ayana Koji excuses himself from the group because he has to meet a certain person very soon and this person is Nagumo in which upon going to the location that Nagumo told him to go, he quickly sees that Nagumo seems to have already been in that location. Nagumo tells Ayana Koji that even though this training camp isn't a special exam, he still wants to compete with him. However, he's not the only one that's in the room. It's actually Nazna as well that is hearing this conversation. Nazna questions Nagumo why he even wants to compete with Ayana Koji. Nagumo explains that at this point, the third years are going to be very busy with the graduation, but also their plans for the future. So because of this, he already wants to get over his competition with Ayana Koji. But the other reason is because he tells Nazna that Ayana Koji isn't an ordinary person. He's been involved in a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes. Nazuna is actually surprised hearing this, but of course Nagumo continues with his conversation with Ayana Koji. Nagumo tells Ayana Koji that if he wins this competition, then he's going to give him a good reward. Ayana Koji is a bit confused because it doesn't seem that he has to give anything to Nagumo if he loses, which it confuses him because it just seems that he's getting more benefit than Nagumo. But at this point, Nagumo makes it very clear that a competition is just a competition and all he just simply wants is to see what Ayana Koji is capable of. He even tells Ayana Koji that he actually got into contact with Kuryuin and told her that him and Ayana Koji is going to be competing, which it seems that Kuryuin was very quick to accept the secret battle between them because she was very curious as to who was going to win and what was going to happen. So at that point, she was pretty much okay with giving Ayana Koji full control of the group. Not to mention that Nagumo just simply tells Ayana Koji that there's going to be 19 activities in total. So so all he has to do is try to win individually 17 of those activities and he only has two chances of losing. Ayana Koji realizing that it's pointless to refuse decides to accept Nagumo's conditions and he's about to leave and it seems that everything seems to have settled but upon leaving he notices that there's somebody waiting for him and it's Ichika and in fact once Nagumo notices Ichika is in the same area he doesn't seem to be happy once they're all there Ichika reveals that she wanted to be part of Nagumo's group it seemed that she already knew what was going to happen and was insisting on Nagumo to let her be part of his group. However, Ayana Koji is very quick to realize that there's something else going on, that there's another reason why Ichika wanted to be in Nagumo's group. Even though she states that she wants to compete with Ayana Koji, he could tell that there's something else going on and that she's planning on doing something. But what that plan is, he doesn't know right now. After this conversation, Ayana Koji decides to tell Hashimoto about what's going on between him and Nagumo because he doesn't want Hashimoto to find out sooner or later. Hashimoto at first is surprised, but it seems that he's not that really shocked by the news and just states that he's very curious and what's about to happen. The next scene involves the first day of the activities and the first activity that Ayana Koji's group is going to be competing is with a group that is known as group 9. There are a few familiar faces that Ayana Koji is able to spot, this being Ike and Kesei that are part of that group. The first activity is an activity that is called Oshibana and it's actually revealed in this moment that Ayana Koji actually did get a few practicing moments with Hiyori to do Oshibana since it seems that she's actually really good at making those kind of things. The person that he's actually competing with in this activity is Nanase, in which Nanase decides to have a quick conversation with Ayana Koji asking if he's actually good at this activity, in which in response, Ayana Koji just states that he's only had a few practices but he does know what he has to do. The competition starts and it's very clear that Ayana Koji was very good at making this because he wins the first activity on his own. 
and not just him but also his group as well in which they get the first point. Upon finishing this activity, he decides to have a quick conversation with Kuryuin, however, it gets interrupted by another student that goes by the name of Inogashira, in which upon seeing them, he asks what's wrong. This is where it's revealed that this person seems to have been responsible for trying to get Koenji back into the group because Koenji, like always, is doing his own thing. At first, Ayana Koji is hesitant and asks them why didn't they just simply ask Harata to do it, but this person feels guilty asking Harata, and knowing Harata from Ayana Koji's perspective, he is a really nice guy, and he'll probably won't stop until he tries to convince Koenji. At first, despite a long thinking, Ayana Koji rejects this and doesn't want to help out. But Kuryuin tells him that it's probably worth the shot trying to convince Koenji to go back into his group. Ayana Koji decides to give it a try and tries to look for Koenji. After trying to get as much information as possible from different people, he is very quick to learn that Koenji seems to be in a very isolated location. After he looks very carefully, he notices Koenji right away and he could tell that Koenji just simply doing his own thing. And Koenji upon seeing Ayana Koji decides to approach him. At first Ayana Koji thought that Koenji was going to ignore him. But Koenji stops and asks Ayana Koji what does he want. Ayana Koji tells him that his group wants him back. To which he says that he doesn't want to go with any of them. Ayana Koji says how they could really use his help. But once again Koenji states how he has no intentions of helping anybody but himself. Realizing that this is all pointless and he's just about to quit, Ayana Koji is starting to head back but Koenji stops him asking Ayana Koji if he wants to know why he doesn't help other people. Ayana Koji responds saying that if he's really going to give an honest answer. In return, Koenji just simply asks him a question. If they were both to compete in a fight with intelligence, who would win? Ayana Koji instantly says that he would win no matter what. Koenji doesn't seem to be surprised by this answer and asks Ayana Koji another question saying that if they were going to do a fight, this being a physical one, who would win? Ayana Koji thinks for it for a while and tells Koenji depending on the rules and the things that they are not allowed to do, Koenji has the advantage. This is something that Koenji doesn't seem to be very happy hearing but he can understand Ayana Koji's perspective. The final question that Koenji asks that based on the questions that he previously answered, does that really matter? Does being intelligent and being physically strong matter in general. Ayana Koji responds saying depending on the scenario, these things may not matter at all. And that's where Koenji states that the thing that he's good at doing is adapting. He's always been able to adapt no matter how harsh the environment is or the group of people that he has to deal with. At that point, Ayana Koji realizes that the reason why Koenji doesn't help people and doesn't like showing off his skills is because he thinks he's better than everybody else. He thinks that the location that he's at right now is nothing compared to him. It was at this moment that Ayana Koji realizes that there's really not going to be anything that will probably change Koenji's line of thinking. And Koenji even realizes this himself as he remarks to Ayana Koji that he won't be able to control him no matter what. Ayana Koji fully realizes this and says that that is true. To which Koenji asks, why does he even bother trying to get him to help other people or to participate with the class? But just as Ayana Koji is about to respond, Koenji cuts him off saying that the reason why he is doing all this is because he knows that once he's out of the classroom, he won't be able to help Horikita. At that moment in Ayana Koji's mind, he states how Koenji has stated a fact. The reason why Ayana Koji has been trying so hard to make Koenji help is because he realizes that he's going to be a big problem to Horikita once he's out of the classroom. It seems that for Ayana Koji, the only way that Koenji is going to stop being a hindrance to the class if he's no longer there at all. But that's an easier task said than done. And upon realizing this conversation was meaningless and there's no point to continuing it, Koenji is simply goes back to doing his own thing. And realizing that there's no point in getting him back at all, Ayana Koji just straight up gives up, getting Koenji back into his group, and just goes back into the building. 
The next scene, we see Ayana Koji heading back and he spots Nazuna and Kryuin in the swing set in a playground. He starts to approach them and while his initial plan was just to talk to Kryuin about the Koenji situation, he stops doing that when he hears that Nazuna and Kryuin are talking about their futures in which Nazuna tells Kryuin what is she planning on doing after high school. Kryuin expresses how she doesn't really have an actual plan or a specific plan that she wants to follow. Nazuna says that if she did and if she had to do it, what career would she choose on trying to follow? Kuryuin says that she would choose being a politician, which of course surprises Nazuna, but Kuryuin explains that because her family has had a lot of connections with politicians, politicians have been everywhere in her entire life. Nazuna states how even though she does seem to be wanting to be a politician, it's a lot of work and there's a lot of corruption involving politicians. Which of course Kiryu is not surprised hearing because she admits that yeah there is a lot of corruption in politicians. But there's always that one politician that shines the light and she explains that she actually has experience with a certain person that has good intentions and is a politician. This being the person that is seeming to be the prime minister at the moment in the classroom of the elite world. Nazuna is surprised to hear Kiryuin have met with somebody like that. But of course, since Ayana Koji is part of this conversation, he joins it by saying to Kiryuin that he wouldn't be surprised if she does become a politician. But of course, she responds by saying there's a lot of things going on and like she stated, there isn't any concrete plan that she actually has in mind at the moment. But she does tell Ayana Koji that if he were to have a career path, he should choose being a politician. In response, Ayana Koji says how that's not really been in his mind and that's not something he tends to want to be. Ayana Koji takes the time and realizes that the event is about to happen, the next activity that they have to participate. Nazuna, upon learning this, quickly says goodbye to the both of them and she rushes to find her group. Upon being alone, Kiryuin and Ayana Koji have their own conversation in which Ayana Koji tells Kiryuin that the whole Koenji stuff was all meaningless because no matter what he said, Koenji wasn't going to come back. Kiryuin doesn't seem to be surprised and almost seems that she already knew the outcome but was just interested to see if Ayana Koji could pull it off. In which in no surprise, he wasn't able to do that. So in the end, they just simply go back into the building to go into the next event. We then get a moment to see how the progress of the activities have been going. In pottery, Ayana Koji won. In table tennis, he also won. In jewelry making, he also won as well. So it was a first good day for him to be competing because it seems that the activities were very easy and he managed to win all of them. That of course, it also involves his group as there hasn't been any loss in their group whatsoever. After the first day has ended, he actually does have another conversation with Hashimoto. Hashimoto explains to Ayana Koji how he's been trying to get information about what Sakinagi has been doing during this whole training camp and he found out that apparently Sakinagi isn't really being too involved with her group. And he also explains to Ayana Koji how it seems that Sakinagi hasn't made any moves whatsoever which while he is relieved he also is worried at the same time if there's going to be some sort of attack against him. But they both come to the conclusion that they're just going to have to wait and see what happens in the following days. But if there's one thing that Hashimoto asks Ayana Koji to do is to look to see if Sakinagi isn't really planning on anything. Ayana Koji, while hesitant, agrees to try to help Hashimoto out. The next moment we see Ayana Koji trying to investigate where Sakinagi is, but he actually encounters a completely different person when doing this, and this is being another class A student, Sanada. Sanada has been introduced a while ago, and if you don't remember, this was the person that Sakinagi was with, in which Sakinagi was helping him out choose a gift for his girlfriend. Upon seeing Ayana Koji, Sanada decides to have a conversation with him, in which he states how are the other classmates of his doing, to which of course Ayana Koji realized that he's probably talking about his group, this being Hashimoto, Yamamura, and I. He says how everything's been alright and Hashimoto has even taken the role of a leader since their leader isn't really doing anything as a leader. It seems that Sanda is very happy to hear this and in return Ayana Koji asks Sanda what is going on with his class and what is going on with Sakyanagi. And he states to Ayana Koji that in terms of Sakyanagi, she's not really that noticeably different she's still acting like her usual self 
well. However, with the class, it's a different story as he states that there is rumors spreading around the class that Hashimoto was the traitor. Ayana Koji asks Honda if that's really what's going on. Is the class really suspicious of Hashimoto? He seems to actually first try to say a sentence, but he stops. But then he decides to continue talking, saying that there's a lot of mixed opinions in the class, but there is one person that certainly does believe Hashimoto is the traitor. This, of course, is Kito, which is another person that's part of Sakinagi's group. This conversation would have probably lasted longer, but Ayana Koji is able to notice that Horikita seems to be looking at him. And of course, this indicates that she probably has something to say to him. Ayana Koji quickly ends the conversation with Sanada and starts heading to Horikita. In this conversation, Horikita tells Ayana Koji if he could do her a favor, which of course he asks where it is. Horikita says if he could train her to become a better fighter so that they could go in another match with Ichika. Ayana Koji is actually surprised with this request because even though he did beat Ichika, Ichika is somebody that a normal person can't just easily defeat and he knows this very clearly. Ayana Koji tells Horikita that what she's requesting is something that is very hard to do because it's not going to be simple. Not to mention that very quickly Ayana Koji tells Horikita that he knows that Ibuki is also watching and of course this leads to Ibuki revealing herself. And this of course leads to him realizing that Ibuki also seems to want to train in order to take down Ichika. Ayana Koji says that they will help on two conditions. Of course, the first condition is that she has to get Ichika's approval to wanting another rematch. However, once Ayana Koji is asked about the second condition, he says that that's not going to be told until the first condition is met. And since Horikita and Ishka are in the same group, they are going to have a lot of time to talk about this to her in private. Of course, this leads to Horikita accepting it. And just as it seems that the conversation is going to end, Horikita is actually stopped by Ayana Koji in which he tells her that he actually does have a small request for her to do that is completely separate to their previous discussion. It's not actually specific as to what he told her to do, but Horikita says that if that's all she has to do, then that's perfectly fine. And that's where their conversation ends. The next day, Ayana Koji is waking up early in the morning at 6 a.m. And this is because this is the time that he told the booking Horikita that is the perfect time for them to do their training. Once he meets Horikita and Ibuki, he asks him if Ichika accepted the rematch, to which Horikita says that she actually surprisingly accepted it very quickly, but there's actually one thing that she said. She said that she actually wanted to do the fight a day earlier, not the last day of the training camp, which of course surprised Ayana Koji because he doesn't know why Ichika decided to move a day earlier than the original date. Realizing it's pointless to think too deeply about it, he decides to start the training and tells Horikita and Ibuki to go after him. With a few rules that are actually very surprising to hear from him, he says how he's only going to use his left arm to counter their attacks, but he's also going to make sure that he doesn't move all that much much. Ibuki and Horikita are very surprised by the conditions that he put on himself. However, this is also the exact same moment in which Ayana Koji reveals the second condition that they both have to do. And of course, this is revealed to be that they have to do a 2v1 against him. Not just against him, but also against Ichika when their rematch happens. Ibuki and Horikita are confused as to why he wants them to do a 2v1 instead of a 1v1. But Ayana Koji states how in their current status, Having a one-on-one -on -one against Ichika is not going to work out at all. The best chance they have is a 2v1. Of course, both of them show some hesitation and they do not agree with this, but realizing that this is the only option that they have right now, they quickly accept it. And once this condition is accepted, the training begins. Ibuki is actually the first one to try to go after Ayana Koji. Ayana Koji is very quick to notice that Ibuki doesn't like using her hands all that much and her specialty is using a lot of kicks. And even though Ibuki's original plan was to go after Ayana Koji's left arm that fails quickly as Ayana Koji is able to counter her. This of course leads to Horikita being next and Horikita's plan is actually different. At first Ayana Koji thought that Horikita was going to go after his left arm but then he notices that she's actually going to try to attack him from a different location. Once he notices this he is very quick to counter Horikita's attack. 
And after a few more training sessions, they were both completely out. Ayana Koyasin did realize that this is a perfect time to stop, which of course after the training session is over, Horikita and Ibuki express their frustration because even though they consider themselves to be solid fighters, there is a lot of things to improve. And once this training is over, they all go their separate ways. It's during the same day that Ayana Koji actually spots Sakinagi and he decides to start a conversation with her. He asks her if she is doing alright and what she has been doing in this training camp. Sakinagi tells Ayana Koi that she's actually been taking it easy and she's not really getting too involved with the activities of this training camp and she's just leaving it all up to the third year leader in the group that she's part of. Ayana Koji asks that now that Karma is gone, is she going to find somebody else that she can rely on to give information to her? Since of course, as you all know, Karma was pretty much Sakinagi's eyes and ears, and whenever Sakinagi wanted something to be investigated, she would always tell Karma to do it, which of course Karma would always do. Upon hearing this question, Sakinai doesn't really know if she has somebody that can be able to replace Kamuro. But it's during this conversation that something else happens. Not only does Kito appear and when Ayana Koya tries to greet him, he completely ignores him. But somebody else decides to join in in this conversation. And this is none other than Ichika once again and very quickly we see what Ichika's true intentions are as she not only asks Sakinagi why her team in the training camp isn't winning but she also makes it very clear that she has a lot of information that is being told to her as she's very quick to tell her that she knows about the results of the previous special exam in which not only did Sakinagi lose in that exam but she lost somebody from her class. But as soon as Ishka is planning on touching Sakinagi in order to tease her more, Kito intervenes and grabs Ichika's hand and at first Ichika tries to play the victim saying to Kito why he's doing this to a defenseless girl. Kito is very quick to know that this is all just a bluff. He knows that Ichika is not somebody you should take lightly. Realizing that Kito is not going to back down, Ichika goes back to her usual self and acts like she had no evil intentions whatsoever and just simply leaves but also at the same time waving back to say goodbye. Ayana Koji realizing this is going to create some sort of attention also decides to leave ending his conversation with Sakinagi at that spot. This will lead to the next scene in which we get the second day of the activities and it seems that in this activity is going to be sculpture experience and the group that he's competing with has somebody that he knows very well and this is Kushida. He actually does have a conversation with Kushida in which in a matter of seconds despite Kushida still having her smile she just shows how she really does not want to be here. She expresses very boldly that this is just simply a waste of time and she just wants to go home and get over this because it's hard for her to always put the nice girl persona when there's people everywhere and there's always somebody that is looking at her. The only thing that Ayana Koji is surprised in this conversation is how she's able to say all this without changing her facial expressions whatsoever. But it's also during this same conversation that Kushida wonders why Nagomo's group is so determined to win and why their method is just simply to use everything they got and go all out. Ayana Koji explains to Kushida that the only reason why they're doing it is because that's pretty much the best option that they have. If they use any other methods like trying to bribe people into winning the games or bribing teams into losing on purpose, people are going to be quick to realize that something strange is happening and the last thing that Nagumo's group wants is to catch that kind of attention. After this the activity starts and even though Kushida was trying to win, Ayana Koji and his group were able to win. The next group of activities goes something like this. In the next activity it was actually a card game known as Trump and not only did Ayana Koji deal with his first loss but his group actually received their first loss as well. In the activity chalk card he was able to win and his group as well. However in miniature golf while he was able to win individually. His team wasn't lucky and his group got another loss. In the activity patchwork, not only did he get his second loss, but the group got another loss as well. In archery, something strange happened because even though I was saying that she was good at archery, she actually managed to do a very bad job, but somehow they managed to avoid a loss, but he too managed to also avoid a loss as well. 
and their activity during classwork. Not only did he manage to avoid a loss, but also the biggest highlight in this activity was that Hiyori was actually really good with this that she actually showed how much skill she actually has. So overall in the second day his group managed to get 9 wins and 3 losses. The next moment was probably the biggest thing to happen in this volume because this was actually something that did not even involve Ayana Koji. So Tokito this being a person who is involved in Ryuin's class gets a message from Ishizaki in which Ishizaki tells him to meet at a certain place. Tokito realizing that this is something that he has to do or else he's going to get in big trouble decides to go. He realizes at first that once he gets into this location that it's just Ishizaki. However he is caught off guard when something pins him from the back and pins him to the wall and no surprise is Ryuin. At first he has no idea why Ryuin did this and tries to play dumb. But of course Ryuin tells him that he actually has had numerous reports from the other members of his class that showed that Tokito was actually going with Sakinagi and trying to comfort her and in fact just pretty much just trying to spend time with her. Ryuin is not happy upon hearing this and wants to know why Tokito is trying to comfort Sakinagi because that is not what anybody from his class should be doing. And it's in this moment that Tokito reveals that the only reason why he's comforting Sakinagi is because he does care for Sakinagi. Of course Ryuin is not happy hearing this and even at one point he even says and I quote does he want to F Sakinagi. Tokito says that it's not like that but of course Ryuin is just going after him saying that if he wants to do it then he could just set up a scene in which he is able to assault Sakinagi. Tokito hearing this comment is not happy obviously but Ryuin continues saying that if he wants to do that then that's going to be great for him because it's not going to affect Sakinagi physically but mentally as well. Of course Tokito at this point is filled with rage and at one moment Ryuin actually lets go because he wants to see what Tokito is going to do. But just as it seems that Tokito wants to attack Ryuin, somebody else shows up and this is none other than Hosen. Of course the only person that Hosen seems to be interested in is Ryuin. But of course Ryuin has no interest in him whatsoever because he's dealing with Tokito. And Tokito ruining his opportunity to attack Ryuin, he is once again pinned in the wall by Ryuin. But as the things couldn't get even more crazy, somebody else shows up once again. And this is the other first year Utomiya. Utomiya confronts Ryuin telling him to back off Tokito because things are only going to get worse. Ryuin ignores him because he has no interest in him whatsoever and this leads to Utomiya at this point also being frustrated and is also ready to get physical. Hosen, who is still in the picture decides to start going towards Ryuin. One of the first people to try to stop Hosen from going after Ryuin is Ishizaki but of course he fails but the next person is Albert. Hosen tries to actually punch Albert but Albert is able to stop his punch which of course only piques Hosen's interest and just as it seems it's going to be a brawl people start to actually notice what is going on and some of the third years start to intervene. Realizing that their show has ended, Ryuin and Hosen, while of course they are irritated that they are no longer able to do the things they wanted to do, are very quick to leave the area. This of course involves Ryuin's group as well. Later that day, Ayana Koji is heading to his room but he notices that his room is empty. But he does get a message from Hashimoto very quickly in which he tells him that if he could join them on the girl's room. Ayana Koji is a bit surprised that this just came out as normal for Hashimoto but not too surprised considering that this is probably not the first time Hashimoto has done something like this. So he heads to where the girls are at and once he is let inside he realizes that the entire group seems to be in this room, the girls and the boys but very quickly he notices that things are tense and most likely the reason why Hashimoto called them to begin with was because he probably thought that he was the only one that could come up with a solution to end the awkward atmosphere. Luckily Ayana Koji does have something that could actually make things fun and this is of course with a pack of cards. 
The person that seems to be the most excited is I, as she's eagerly wanting to play cards and suggests to everyone they should play the classic game in which the only way to lose is if you have the Joker card. Everyone is very quick to accept this and everyone wants to play cards, except for Yamamura, in which upon asking if Yamamura wants to play, she says that she's only going to watch. Realizing that it's pointless to keep asking her the same thing, he decides to start with the game. I is actually very quick to show us a very sneaky trick in order to win this game. I actually puts a card separated from the other group of cards in order to trick you into believing whether or not that's the Joker or she's just simply baiting them to pick that card to find out. Sadly, the person who becomes a victim of this is Hiyori, but instead of being mad, she's actually very still calm and collected. Even if not only she ended up getting the Joker, but she also ended up losing that game as well. This goes on for a while and even though everyone seems to be having fun, the only person who is still not participated is Yamamura. And even though Ayana Koji asked her once again if she wants to play, it wouldn't be until Hiyori asked her to play that Yamamura accepts to play. But very quickly, despite her joining the game, Ayana Koji notices that for everybody else, Yamamura is an invincible person as people forget that she's even in that game. Not only that, but some people even forget about her name. And the sad thing is, is that Yamamura doesn't even correct it, she just simply goes along with it. These events are things that Ayana Koji is going to keep in mind for the near future. After realizing that the time has been already late, Ayana Koji as well as the other guys decide to head back to their rooms. However, this is where we get to see another episode of Hashimoto freaking out as he decides to have another private conversation with Ayana Koji in which he tells Ayana Koji that he really doesn't know what is going on since it seems that Sakinagi hasn't done anything. Ayana Koji can tell that Hashimoto is really starting to get paranoid and it's very clear this is starting to get to him. But Ayana Koji is able to convince him that everything is still fine and that he doesn't have to worry if nothing has happened yet because this could just be Sakinagi taking it easy and not having any intentions of doing anything in this training camp. This seems to have calmed Hashimoto down but as a result of this Hashimoto tells Ayana Koji that he could go back to the room while he can go somewhere else this being the bathroom from the lobby room. Ayana Koji is confused as to why he's choosing to go to the bathroom at that location but he decides to let him do whatever he wants. The next day is the third day of the training and just as things were about to begin Ibuki decides last minute that she needs to head to the bathroom. Which of course makes Ayana Koji the only one with Horikita. They start a conversation in which Ayana Koji asks Horikita as to who was the least known person in the class, somebody that had very little presence. Horikita is at first confused why this question popped out of nowhere, but after thinking, she just outright admits that it was actually Ayana Koji. Since in the beginning of their school year, she barely felt Ayana Koji's presence and for her, Ayana Koji was non-existent. Which of course, upon hearing this, Ayana Koji can relate to this with what's going on with Yamamura. But Horikita makes it very clear that because of all the things he has done and all the main things he has been involved in, of course, she tells him that he left a huge mark. Horikita decides to use this opportunity to tell Ayana Koji of what she found out, the request that he made. She tells Ayana Koji what the details are but we don't really know what they are. The only thing that we do know is that after this Horikita asks Ayana Koji if it's very useful to which Ayana Koji responds saying that it is. But upon realizing that Ibuki has taken forever, they start to wonder what happened with Ibuki and if they're going to have to cancel their training session because Ibuki is not showing up. When all of a sudden they hear somebody shout a surprise attack in which is none other than Ibuki charging at Ayana Koji. But because she already announced her presence, Ayana Koji is very quick to avoid it and even tells Ibuki that she shouldn't do something that is similar to Ishizaki. Which of course makes Ibuki not happy and becomes pissed at Ayana Koji because of him comparing her to Ishizaki. Horikita is of course confused why Ishizaki was brought into this conversation and this is where Ibuki reveals to Horikita it has something to do with of course the rooftop incident in which obviously Ayana Koji not only beat up Yurin but the rest of them as well. Upon hearing this Ayana Koji realizes that he can't deny it and tells Horikita that that's exactly why Ishizaki was brought up. Of course, Horikita is not surprised because very early on during second year, Horikita got this information from Ibuki, so this wasn't really a big revelation to her, but she asked Ayana Koji if there's anything else that he is hiding. 
He says no, but of course, Horky does not buy it, but just simply lets it slide. They do some more training, but they come to realize that their time is almost up because the next activity is about to happen, so they call it a day. The next activity that Ayana Koji's group is going to have to do is Shogi. However, after they come to realize that they're missing one member that's supposed to play this game, this being I, they all decide to quickly search for her before the game starts. Ayana Koji is actually the one to be able to find her, and he sees her that she's in some sort of tree, and once he gets more closer, he notices that I seems to have her eyes closed and is touching the tree confused he asks her what she's doing and she responds by saying that she's trying to listen to the sounds of the forest which of course confuses ayana koji even more and i proceeds to tell ayana koji to do the exact same thing ayana koji curious decides to do what i just did and touches the tree to see if they could hear the sounds of the forest but this is where he comes to realize that this was all just simply a trick on i in order for i to record him doing something strange Ayana Koji is not happy that I recorded that whole thing, but of course, I is completely happy that she managed to have a recording of Ayana Koji doing something completely weird. Once they are heading back, I decides to question Ayana Koji about Hashimoto, in which she says to Ayana Koji, what does he think of Hashimoto? And what does he think of him as a member of class A? Ayana Koji responds saying that Hashimoto is a very interesting individual because while he does have a few skills that are very interesting and make him pretty much the person that he is there's also very clearly a difference between his line of thinking compared to the ordinary student from class a seeming to be happy with these answers i no longer ask any more questions and of course they begin their game with shogi in which ayana koji explains how despite i clearly boasting that she's good at shogi it's in fact true as i was able to dominate the shogi game clearly showing that she does in fact have the skills to be a good shogi player the next event is of course the event that everyone has been waiting for the match between ayana koji's group and nagumo's group and the activity that they're both going to have to do against each other is archery Hashimoto comes up to Ayana Koji saying that this is going to probably be a tricky battle because he's heard that Katsuragi scored in total of 36 points which is pretty impressive for an average student who isn't really too invested in archery to get that score but the most interesting thing is of course the lineup and the one that piques Ayana Koji's interest the most is his battle against Ichika. When it's finally their turn to go against each other, Ishka doesn't hold back as despite her clearly being somebody who has little to no experience with archery, she actually managed to get a total of 57 points which not only shocked the people that were seeing it but also the instructor as well. But of course, somebody who wasn't surprised is of course Ayana Koji. When it's his turn, he realizes that Ishka didn't hold back almost as an indicator that he can't hold back as well so he does what he has to do and he also tries his hardest in archery and as a result of this he actually manages to get 58 points and he wins against Ichika by one point Ichika comes towards Ayana Koji congratulating him telling him that it was a close call Ayana Koji states how he's also impressed that Ichika managed to get an almost perfect score with very little experience Ichika states that she only had to watch a couple of tutorials and just get a hang of it in order to master this activity so overall towards the very end the results are in Ayana Koji's group manages to land in fourth place whereas Nagumo's group is unsurprisingly still in first place. However, despite Ayana Koji's group not landing in first place, that wasn't the actual bet because Ayana Koji did what Nagumo told him to do, to win a total of 17 activities on their own and he managed to do just that because during their private conversation after the events have ended, Nagumo promises Ayana Koji his reward for doing exactly that. Although he does state that even though this was technically a competition, he still wanted to do more. But due to how the training camp was structured, that was very impossible to do. And he even asked Ayana Koji if there were stakes and if there were things that he had to do no matter what, what would he have done differently? Ayana Koji responds saying that it all depended on the scenario. But if there was something that he had to do and the stakes were high, he would have most likely manipulated Horikita and Harata to let him win the game of archery by making them miss their shots on purpose. And that will lead to Nagumo not being able to determine if the shots were being missed on purpose or by accident due to their inexperience. 
Nagumo was planning on asking more questions, but he realizes that these questions are more what ifs, and they're pretty much pointless at this point since they don't really matter. Nagumo tells Ayana Koji that it was a very interesting journey with him, and he hopes that this isn't the last time that he would see him. And he tells Ayana Koji that if he does plan on going on university, then he should go to Manabu's university because he's also going to go there as well. Ayana Koji says he'll have that on his mind, and just when it seems that Nagumo is about to leave, Ayana Koji stops him telling him that he has one last message that he has to say to somebody. Nagumo at first thinks it's Manabu, but Ayana Koji whispers to him and it's somebody completely different. Once Nagumo hears what he had to say, he asks him if it's okay for him to reveal that information because that would have been probably the last time he had of somebody sabotaging his plans of graduating class A. But Ayana Koji states that he's seen how much Nagumo has worked and how much effort he has put into staying into class A that he deserves to graduate in class A. And that's where both of their conversations end. That night, Ayana Koji is in his room with Hashimoto as well as with some other guys when he receives a message from Hiyori in which Hiyori states that Yamamura hasn't returned to their room in quite a while and it's getting really late for anybody to be outside of the rooms. Ayana Koji tells her why doesn't she just contact her on her phone but Hiyori states that she actually left her phone in the room. So at that point, Ayana Koji realizes that Hiyori wants him to look for Yamamura and to see if she's okay. Ayana Koji tells Hashimura and the other guys that he's going to go outside for a while and the search for Yamamura begins. Ayana Koji realizes that it's past curfew so if he gets caught by an adult he's most likely going to get a lecture. And so very secretly Ayana Koji looks for Yamamura but also at the same time keeping an eye out to make sure that there's no adults. For a while he's not able to find Yamamura but then he sees somebody near the vending machine and she's leaning next to it and unsurprisingly this person is Yamamura. Once Ayana Koji sees that it's her, he starts to approach her more closely and Yamamura doesn't even notice him until of course he calls out her name which of course shocks her because she wasn't expecting for somebody to find her just like that. But of course this is Ayana Koji we're talking about. Ayana Koji tells her what she is doing in which Yamamura tells him that she's just trying to put her head together because due to the main things that have happened with class A, it's not surprising that Yamamura has a lot of things going on in her head. Of course, there's that whole situation with Komuro in which she ended up being the one to get expelled instead of her and she could tell that Sakinagi really wanted Yamamura to be the one to be expelled and not Komuro but due to how things played out, Komuro would be the one to get expelled from their school. And ever since then, she hasn't really been able to talk to Sakinagi or have any contact with her because she is scared of what might happen. And the last thing that she wants is to be enemies with Sakinagi. After hearing this, Ayana Koji tells Yamamura that he'll actually look into this and he'll see if there's a possible solution between the two. But tells her that it's probably a good idea if she goes back to her room so she doesn't get the other people that are in her room worried about her. More specifically, Hiyori. However, it was during this same interaction that something else also happened somewhere else as it was 1am and Nagumo was actually walking outside. He was fully aware that if an adult saw him, he would get in trouble but because it was so late, he could hardly believe that there would be any adults searching the area at this time. But very quickly, he starts to realize that he is not alone and unsurprisingly that is true because Nagumo encounters somebody and this somebody is Ichika. Ichika tells Nagumo that she's glad that he came like he was told to. Nagumo curious asks Ichika what would have happened had he ignored that and just simply stayed in his room the whole night. To which Ichika reveals a very surprising detail saying that if he was not going to come, then she was actually going to beat up Nazna. Like she just straight up said so. It's like she was going to beat up Nazna, knowing that Nazna was somebody that Nagumo knew very well. Ichika talks further, telling Nagumo that she's about to beat him up. And normally Nagumo wouldn't take this threat that seriously. But coming from Ichika, he could tell that this girl wasn't playing around. But before he got beat up, Nagumo asks Ichika why does she want to beat him up? And this is where we get the revelation that the reason why Ichika wanted to be Nagumo's group and was always keeping an eye on him 
was because she was planning on getting revenge on him for the Yagami situation. For those who don't know, Yagami was the other white room student that was a part of this school and during the cultural festival arc, Yagami was actually expelled by Ayana Koji. So it seems that Ishika has been holding a grudge against Nagumo because of that situation. Even though, let me remind you that this is the same person that was actually scared of Yagami. But I guess because they were both part of the white room, they have some sort of connection. I really don't know. This is actually kind of interesting that Ishika, the girl who was scared of Yagami, is also trying to avenge Yagami for what happened to him. Pretty weird. But Nagumo proceeds to tell her that that wasn't his plan. The person, the mastermind who actually got Yagami expelled was none other than Ayana Koji. And he asks her why didn't she just take out her anger towards him. Ishika states that she actually had a few things in mind, but it wasn't to take her anger out towards Ayana Koji. In fact, she was actually going to beat up somebody else that is connected to Ayana Koji. And this was actually K. That's right, Ishika was actually planning on beating up K in order to get revenge at Ayana Koji. But she didn't do that because she knew firsthand that Ayana Koji was not going to be happy hearing that. But also because since K was somebody that was part of Ayana Koji's plans, she didn't want to ruin any of his plans. Nagumo realizing that he's about to get beat up, he tells Ishika that he has a gift for her. Of course, Ishika is dismissive and doesn't care about what Nagumo's gift is, but this is where Nagumo reveals what Ayana Koji told him to tell her, in which Nagumo proceeds to say, you still have value, don't waste it. And upon hearing that, in a matter of seconds, Ishika's determination to beat up Nagumo faded away. It's almost as if these words from Ayana Koji just completely stopped her and just completely destroyed her. Nagumo realizing that the conversation has ended and that the situation isn't going to happen anymore, he decides to walk back to his room and tells Ichika that she should probably do the same thing or else she's going to get in trouble. Ichika just stands there at that point with no words left to say. The next day, it will be the last day of the training camp. Ayana Koji states how he's actually glad that nothing happened or else he would have probably realized in the morning that something were to happen this place would have been chaos and thanks to his countermeasures nothing bad happened and actually Ayana Koji is alone right now because it's 6 a.m because today is the day that Ichika, Horikita, and Ibuki are going to have their rematch fight but suddenly someone unsuspected comes towards Ayana Koji and it's none other than Subaki. Subaki asks Ayana Koji why he's up so early but not only that but she's also noticed that he's been outside for quite a while in early in the mornings for these past couple of days. Ayana Koji tells her there's some things that he has to take care of but this is where Subaki proceeds to ask Ayana Koji if they want to have a short walk for a while. Ayana Koji accepts and they have a walk in which at first Tsubaki seems to be very relaxed but very quickly she uses certain comments that Ayana Koji could tell that she has some sort of grudge against him or hates him for whatever reason. Tsubaki asks Ayana Koji if he likes snow to which Ayana Koji states yes but Tsubaki says that she likes snow even more and Tsubaki proceeds to ask him another question telling him that if he had another brother that he had no idea existed and was doing a different lifestyle than he was, how would he react? Ayana Koji says he wouldn't know because it all depends on his relationship with this person that is his brother and depending on how serious their connection is. Tsubaki proceeds to say that that's probably a good answer because she too, if she had a sister, she would probably be thinking like that as well. Of course, Ayana Koji is confused as to why she used sister for her example, but it would all start to make sense once she states that what if you had a sibling that you actually knew existed but you also knew their dark past as well. And just when it seems that things are about to get interesting, this of course gets cut off when Ayana Koji realizes that he could see Horikita, Ibuki, and surprisingly Kushida walking towards them. Tsubaki also realizing this ends the conversation there and heads back to the building. Of course, the three girls are confused as to why Ayana Koji was having a conversation with Tsubaki, but he just says that she just really wanted to talk to him for some reason. He's actually confused as to why Kishida is here. Horikita explains that somebody leaked information 
and this of course led to Kushida finding out about their rematch. Of course, it's not surprising as to who this person was that leaked that information as Ibuki is defending herself stating that it was Kushida's fault because she tricked her into telling her this information. Ayana Koi could tell that Kushida seems to be relaxed and not be bothered by the fact that there's going to be a fight very soon, most likely because she still holds a grudge against Ichika because of their interactions during the island exam. And of course, she just loves to see what Ibuki and Horikita are going to do and to see if they fail by any chance. So yeah, for Kushida, this is a good timing because the three people that she seems to not be a huge fan of are going to be fighting. They end up walking towards the location that the fight is going to take place. However, Ayana Koi tells them that he's going to do something else that he has to do, which of course shocks everyone because they thought he was going to be a witness to the fight. But Ayana Koi states that if Ichika were to find out that he was training them, then of course none of this would matter and plus since Kushida is already there she could be the witness and just tell him everything that happened the next day. They all accept that and decide to let Ayana Koji go. Ayana Koji has one last thing he has to do and this of course leads to the next scene in which Ayana Koji sees somebody that's already at the park that he told them to be at and this is none other than Sakenagi. Once she sees Ayana Koji, she's actually amazed that Ayana Koji called her to me at this location because he rarely does that. Of course, Ayana Koji tells her that it's because it's something important and they proceed to talk. And this is of course in relation to Yamamura. Of course, Sakenagi is shocked that that name got brought up and she wonders why Ayana Koji wants to talk about Yamamura. Ayana Koji tells her that Yamamura is somebody that could be good use of her and if she's still looking for someone to replace Kamuro for her eyes and ears, then she should use Yamamura. But of course, it's all up to her, and if she doesn't want to, then that's perfectly fine. Sakenagi thinks for it for a while and thinks that while well, yes, Yamamura is somebody that could be good use of her, she doesn't really know how to approach her ever since the whole situation with the special exam. But this is where Ayana Koi reveals that he actually already contacted Yamamura and she's already meeting them at another different spot. Sakenagi is surprised but realizing that it's not a great idea to let Yamamura keep hanging, she decides to want to talk to her and although she said this, it seems that she's not mentally prepared because she has a hard time moving forward. Ayana Koji seeing this tells her that he is going to be her legs for today because all of this is happening because of him and they head to the location that Yamamura is at. Once they see that Yamamura is at the location that he told her to be, this is where he lets Sakenagi go and because this is a private conversation between the both of them, he just lets them talk on their own without interfering. And that would be the end of the training camp arc. The next day, Ayana Koji is actually walking towards school, but before that, he's actually going to talk to somebody. And this, of course, is Horikita. Once he sees that Horikita is at the spot that they are both supposed to meet, they start walking towards the school. And Ayana Koji states how it's actually surprising how much the relationship has grown. They used to be people who didn't see eye to eye, and Ayana Koji and Horikita were clearly two completely different kinds of people. But he could tell that as time went on and the time that they spent together, they actually decided to establish a friendship between one another. Ayana Koji asks Horikita what happened with the Ichika fight, to which unsurprisingly she states that even though they did put up a good fight, Ichika won. And very quickly, Ichika was noticing the movements were very similar to something that Ayana Koji most likely taught them. So it's not surprising that Ichika was able to piece together that Ayana Koji trained these two to try to have a fight with her. It's not really surprising, but with more future fights, they will actually be able to go up against Ichika very soon. Now they move on to the next subject, Horikita asked what he wanted to talk about this morning. Ayana Koi tells her that this next special exam is probably going to be a very difficult one and most likely a lot of things are going to be at stake. Horikita knowing this is not really sure why Ayana Koji is talking about this all of a sudden, but very clearly he knows that it's because this is probably going to be the test where everything changes, where not only is his relationship with K is going to change, but with the rest of the class as well, including Horikita. And even though Horikita states it's not going to be a problem as long as they stick together, he knows that that's not going to happen because very soon things are going to be completely different. 
and that's pretty much where it ends in this volume there is a few other chapters that reveal a lot of more other things as well like of course Sakenage and Ryuin making a deal in front of their teachers that whoever loses this next special exam is going to be expelled which is something that is going to be a huge deal in the next volume most likely and we also get the revelation during the whole conversation with Hashimura and Ayana Koji that because of this actual bet in the making for a really long time between Ryu and Sakinagi, that is the reason why Hashimura actually betrayed Sakinagi. He wanted to make sure that he had somebody, no matter who won, was most likely going to be the one to be in class A. Because as you all know, the only reason why Hashimura is doing this is because he wants to be in class A until the very end. And then of course we have the short stories. These short stories in this volume is with Hiyori, Chavashira, and Ai. Ai's short story was the least interesting because it just confirms that Ai is very invested in Ayana Koji and wants to learn more about him. The Hiyori one was actually one interesting one because it's actually during the card game in which she actually noticed that Ayana Koji was staring at her during the whole battle between her and Ai in which of course Ai was wanting Hiyori to pull the Joker. It seemed that his eye contact with her was telling her that what she was about to pull was the Joker and she actually purposely did it to see if her intuition was correct and that's what really made her happy is the fact that it seems that Ayana Koji was trying to help her and trying to avoid her from getting the Joker which was something that she could greatly appreciate and then lastly the Chabashiro one was the one that was the most interesting out of all of them because what Chabashira says in this short story is very interesting to say the least. She reveals that she actually wants Ayana Koji to find her weaknesses and how there seems to have this strange feeling inside of her towards Ayana Koji. Which I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that this is not what it seems to be. But if it is what I think it is, it's a very interesting direction to put Chabashira towards because this was not expected. I did not expect this kind of development. but. This is most likely going to be further explained in future volumes. Who knows, maybe in volume 12 or volume 12.5, we might get more moments with Chabashira having this feeling towards Ayana Koji. But that's all I'm going to say. I really don't know. It's really complicated because I really don't know if this is just some bait or this is actually something that is going to happen in the near future where we could potentially have somebody else joining the harem. But... I'll leave it at that for now, who knows what might happen and I'm really looking forward for the other volumes. Like I stated before, this was more of a setup volume but it's very clear that the setup is more interesting compared to other setup volumes because I can just imagine the main things that are going to happen towards the end of second year. There's still clearly going to be a lot more shocking moments and I'm really looking forward to that. Also something else that is worth mentioning is how we most likely will not be getting volume 12 anytime soon. Based on the author's comment, it is very clear that the author is dealing with a lot of health issues and he does state that there may potentially be a delay because he just simply wants to rest because of the amount of work he has put himself into. So it's completely understandable and I can understand why he wants to take a break, which I think it's really, really appropriate for him to do that because I care more about the author's health than him finishing the other volumes because as much as I love Classroom DLE and I want to see more volumes being made, I want to have more content to be able to make. I do want the author's health first to be good so that he can continue because we've seen many cases like I stated earlier and many times before that there are creators and there are authors that put their health at huge risk just to complete their series or to finish the work that they have to finish to make the series you know not delayed or not have a huge gap in releases. So. Overall, I wish nothing but the best to the author. I hope he makes a very speedy recovery. I hope he gets well soon. And if he has to take a break, then he should just go for it because I will still be waiting for more Classroom DLE. And I don't care how long it takes, as long as his health gets better, that's all that matters right now. That's pretty much where I'm going to end today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.